I'm the magical man, man from Happy Land. I live in a gumdrop house on <laughs> Lollipop Lane. <laughs> in case you were wondering, I was being sarcastic, Marge. <laughs> the Game Room is a production of Lackawanna College, serving students, graduates, and our surrounding communities since 1894. This episode is sponsored by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Learn more at GameFuel.com. Hello and welcome to The Game Room. I am not Teddy Delaney. I'm Chris Hughes. And I am Robert Escrow. Teddy is out this week. Uh, he's spreading the good news of esports in West Virginia. Uh, so I'm stepping in. But if you've missed Teddy already, stay tuned. He's going to be back for a pre-recorded interview that we have with Josh Knutson from Bite Speed and Gravity Gaming. Uh, but we're going to start, even though Teddy's not here, we're going to start this episode the way we start every episode, with the patch notes. So on this week's patch notes, we're going to start, uh, as we always do, with Rocket League. Uh, this week, we actually won a match by forfeit on Monday. We had a forfeiture from Paul Smith's college, so there's really no update for Rocket League. So let's get right into Overwatch. Rob, I know we had another difficult match for that team this week. Yes, yes, we did. And it's, again, this is one of those things, uh, getting into it, being new to the, to the competitive scene, um, going up against colleges and teams who have been playing together for a hell of a lot longer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's basically what it breaks down to. But we're finding our stride, which is great. That's great. Um, but getting into, I mean, the current standings, ECAC released their standings thus far in the league. And the, some of the colleges that we've gone up against are doing fairly well. So I don't feel so bad. And I, <laughs> I know our team doesn't feel so bad as well. And we were talking um, about that a little bit last week where there, a lot of the teams are 3-0. They're, they're doing very well so far in the yes. ECAC. Okay. And so there were some changes this week. As uh, Right now, I mean, just in Overwatch and the Group 6 standings, which is uh, the group round that we're in, uh, uh, with ECAC, RPI is sitting at a, a two and O. Uh, they're apparently they had a bye week last week, um, so they're I mean looking forward to see what they do this week. Uh, Stevenson University, who we went up against in the first round, is sitting at two and O as well. Uh, College of Saint Rose, we played two and one. Uh, NYIT, who we went up against, is a one and one. Uh, and then Arcadia is a zero in one. They've only played one match thus far, hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we're sitting at uh, presently uh, an O and two, uh, an admirable O and two. Only but, room to improve. Uh, oh, exactly. And one of the this is broad, broadly speaking, when it comes to uh, competitive esports, and especially if you if you're coming back from. A uh, not so great record right now. Where where do you go from here? We rebuild, right? Exactly. There was there was a moment last week after after our match where the team had a come to Jesus moment, and it was it was we we sat down and it was because obviously we're feeling dejected, and it's the question is is what do you do in that moment? And we had this moment where we came together and we said this clearly something isn't working. Mm -hmm. What do we do? And we pointed out to a couple things that we're going to work on. Uh, a couple changes that are going to be made, and uh, starting this week, we already see a massive improvement, and I think Wednesday's match uh, is going to be fun, That's to great. say the least. That's it great. will be fun. Yeah. Um, uh, going, going back to Rocket League, I mean, it's unfortunately that, I mean, it's fortunate that we won, but of course, you don't <laughs> want to win through forfeit, right? right? It's it's one of those things that the well, pride wise, you, you, yes, you won, but there's always an asterisk next to it. Right. Um, so the standings in Group Five, which is what the Rocket League team is sitting at, RPI sitting at a three and zero. RPI is doing real well in the ECAC league, uh, or both match, uh, both games thus far. Um, SUNY Poly, their A team is sitting at a one and zero. Again, only playing one match yeah, over the past three weeks. Uh, Lackawanna College sitting at a two and zero, but again. Got to put that asterisk. It's okay. Just, but it's okay. It looks we, good. Because we're in top three. <laughs> um, Washington College sitting at one and one, and then you have Central Methodist University at a zero and one. Yeah. Uh, clearly, they only played SUNY Poly. And uh, Paul Smith's College, uh, zero and three. Mm. And, but again, and I wonder how many of those now, you have to wonder how many are by forfeiture. Because right. obviously one of them is to us by forfeiture. I, I do know for there, there has been at least one team in both, in both games, both mm -hmm. Overwatch and Rocket League, that apparently didn't field a team, okay. uh, but was kept in the groups. Yeah. So they're, they're, it's, it's almost like a second bye week, yeah. kind of. Uh, but it's, it's something, uh, going back to the, the, the schools that are on the bottom standings, where do they go from here? Right. How do they, this is a moment that they need to uh, treat with uh, the utmost care. Mm -hmm. And they need to go into it and reassess, reevaluate, and come back stronger. 
Uh, now, unfortunately, some of these teams uh, may have a bye week and they can reassess and get some time. Right. Unfortunately for us, we don't. Our bye week is the last week of group play. Ooh. So we, we get to just go, go butt our head against the wall until <laughs> the last week. Well, but I, I think the important thing to touch on is uh, it's not just a, about uh, assessing what you're doing in game, right? So uh, we've been down three starters uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, mm -hmm. but we've, uh, you know, We've committed, obviously, to, to making sure that our esports athletes are good student athletes. So you're back up a couple starters this week. We as are. Well, the, right? the, the, the starters have been working hard. They got um, where they needed to be, and they can play again now, yeah. which is, again, another reason why this week is going to be fun. It's good for multiple reasons. For multiple reasons, <laughs> yeah. Well, but not only were we able to, we were re able to reassess with the, the stand in players that we've been having. Because, mm -hmm. again, these, these uh, we weren't expecting to put them into competitive play right out the gate. Sure. Um, so it was it was a struggle, but now having the full starting team back, um, and then also uh, having the that the the B team essentially mm -hmm. being there and being in a stronger place is just going to help. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure they've learned a lot about their own play styles by being kind of thrown into the fire. Exactly, so. it's a trial by fire is always sometimes sometimes the best way to learn. You just got to throw a baby into the pool and hope it holds its breath. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for this week's Patch Notes. Stay tuned for Teddy's Grand Return and an interview with Josh Knutson from Byte Speed and Gravity Gaming. Rob, thanks so much for letting me take the seat today. You're very welcome, but I think it's time for you to leave. So get out of here! <laughs> Our stadium may not hold 100,000 people, but we still compete with other colleges all over the country. Giant lecture halls? Eh, that's not really for me. I like the laid-back approach. Lackawanna is close to home, with satellite centers located throughout Northeastern and Central PA. Lackawanna College, helping me help you. The choice is yours to make. Changing how I learn. Changing where I learn. Changing my life. All right, welcome back everyone. We now have a special guest interview from a good buddy of ours, Josh Knutson from the University of Jamestown, who is now the eSports and Virtual Reality Solutions Director for Speed and Gravity Gaming. Josh, thanks for joining us. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So off the bat, I kind of just wanted to ask, how did a little school like the University of Jamestown get started in eSports? It was way back in 2016. Um, so kind of like the infancy of collegiate esports kind of as we know it now um the nace had just had their very first ever um summer summit um kind of like that brain trust meeting of all the schools who had programs so robert Mer morris um maryville kind of that first meeting down in kansas city um we sent an admissions counselor down there as kind of our representative from the school because they just invited everybody that they could um, and we thought, well, yeah, we should probably attend this thing, not really knowing what it was going to lead to. Um, and our admissions counselor came back and Donovan said, you know, this thing is going to move forward whether we jump on board or not. Um, so we should at least look into it. And over the next two and a half months, that was in July, um, over the next two and a half, three months, we kind of formed a small task group uh, with myself and a couple other people on campus to do some research. Um, thought that it was a really good chance for this small private liberal arts school with about a thousand undergrad students to boost our enrollment a little bit, add another opportunity for our students to compete and uh, get involved on campus um, and eventually add a 30 man roster uh, at kind of that varsity level model. So in October of that year, we kind of got the go ahead and I was tapped to start and run the program and we kind of jumped off at it that fall, um, took a existing student media center space that we had on campus that wasn't really being utilized anymore. We saw it as a really good opportunity to start a facility, get things off uh, the ground rolling with a, an existing space on campus. And um, I recruited uh, 12 students that first year. Uh, and now fast forward to 2019, we've had a sweet 16 finish in Hearthstone, the national tournament. Um, Roster is about 30 kids. They're on head coach number two now uh, and, and chugging away. So it's kind of um, a, a really big uh, transformation over the course of like three years. Uh, and it's just I, I'm super lucky that I was able to be a part of that. I mean, that's really impressive, especially that, that in your first year, you were able to recruit 16 students. And now, I mean, double the program size just within a, a short span of time. 
How did you go about recruiting those students, especially with being such a smaller school? (laughs) The recruiting resources that are out there now, as opposed to what was out there in 2016, are completely different. You know, we didn't have the the be recruited database that we do now. Recruit rivals didn't exist back then. Um, NCSA hadn't taken that partnership yet. Um, you know, these things like the combines that are popping up with GYO sports and all these other things, those didn't exist back then. So it was a lot of, quite honestly, like Google searching for high school esports teams. If a school had some semblance of a club or a team or something on their website that said esports, um, I dug down and tried to find a contact for that school left a lot of emails left a lot of voicemails i think i probably called 200 schools that year um with very little return um but you know we kind of just slogged through it that way i leveraged my admissions department they were incredible um just with the students that they were coming in contact with uh, on their day-to-day jobs um so you know using the resources that we had existing and then you know when new stuff came about like those um, online databases and, and other things, just kind of grabbing onto them as fast as we could. And um, we, we learned a lot early on. There's a lot of things that we were doing that were not efficient, not working well. And our process got better over the three years that I was there. Um, and, and I think nowadays it's, it's so much more streamlined and in line with kind of how our basketball team recruits, our football team recruits and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think we had a lot of the same experiences, you know, we've only, this is our only our second year, but even in year one, we learned a lot and we figured out how to restructure and make it work. Um, Can you talk about that a little bit? Like what are some of the things that you realized, wow, we didn't do this right. We need to change this, you know? Yeah. um, I I definitely think like you learn that emails don't get responded to. Text messages almost honestly don't get responded to. Um, so you really got to pick up the phone and call. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was kind of like not something that I thought would be the case, you know, recruiting 16, 17, 18 year olds. Um, but, uh, you know, getting that conversation piece going um, and actually being able to talk with them for a half an hour, an hour, talk about what their dreams were, their, their goals were. Uh, and making sure that they were the right fit for us. Um, we learned pretty early on too that our our campus visit conversion rate was like bananas. Um, if we got a student to come to, to our campus and do a tour and meet with our faculty and stuff, like eight times out of 10, we were signing those kids. It's one thing for you to just sit on the phone with a kid for an hour and say, you know, this is what we're all about. It's another thing to have them come and meet your team in person and and sit down at practice and be in that environment and eat supper at the cafeteria and, um, you know, go to the comedian that's on campus that night or just hang out in the dorms. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, And I think we've, again, had similar experiences. If we can get kids in the facility to see the atmosphere and meet the team, you know, and, and walk around and meet someone from every department to let them know that we're here to help we're here to hold your hand through this whole um, onboarding process it really it really changes that so I guess uh, before we touch on what you're doing now in that beautiful room you have behind you um, what would be some advice that you would give to a, a, a small school like the University of Jamestown with a thousand students or even lack someone like Lackawanna College with 1800 students what advice would you give to them for starting up a, a new esports program Two things. Uh, Number one, start small. Um, One of our good friends, Sean Burney from St. Clair College, we talked uh, last week about running esports events and and college programs and stuff. And I think people kind of get the the like, oh my gosh, this is a gold mine kind of look when it comes to esports. And they get in a little over their heads to begin with. And they're like, we're going to have. 80 students on our roster we're going to have this giant facility we're going to have you know national championship contending teams in five games and i think you have those big aspirations and goals and that's awesome but you have to build up to it it's not going to happen overnight um because a lot of things can get rushed or not implemented well and it takes time to learn uh, and go through and have failures i think that's super important is to fail and to learn from that um so start small and scale out over like a two three year period um and number two use the community 
uh, as a resource. Um, I, something that just it blew me away, and I'm so proud to be a part of the community, is the fact that all of the, the varsity coaches and directors out there at the college level, everybody is super willing to lend a hand when, when somebody asks for it. Lend advice, jump on a call and talk about problems for half an hour, or go back and forth on Discord or something like that. Speak at conventions and coaching clinics and share their knowledge. Um, and I think it, there's so much out there in the form of like human capital and human resources that if you're starting a new program, you know, pick up the phone and call the college next to you if they have a program, use the people around you and the people in the country that have been doing it for a couple of years, you know, get a hold of uh, the Teddy Delaney's of the world and get a hold of, you know, the, the clerkies and Chad Schmelt, all those guys that, you know, the old pros, the old guard, um, you, you know, it might be intimidating to think, oh, I'm going to message the, the national championship team and ask for help you're probably going to actually find that help when you ask for it. It's really fun to hear you say these things because they're I think they're things that both Teddy and myself have always talked about. It's it's start small, work on quality, not quantity, and slowly build to that place that you want to be as opposed to trying to rush to get there right off the bat. Yeah, just like you said, everyone's <laughs> willing to lend their hand, lend their experience, their advice. They've been through certain things that you're about to go through. And everyone wants to help, and it's it's a great feeling to see that in the entire community. We're really focused on just advancing the sport forward, honestly. Now, before we cut you loose, I wanted to talk about where those three years at the University of Jamestown led you, um, and tell us a little bit about your current role as the esports and virtual reality solutions director for Byte Speed and Gravity Gaming. I, I kind of took a, an early retirement out of college. <laughs> Um, I'm semi-retired, uh, <laughs> uh, and I, there was an opportunity that came up here at Bytespeed to um, really make an impact in a different way. Um, you know, I, I loved my time at University of Jamestown. I have nothing but good things to say about the school. Um, it's my alma mater. I love that place. Um, but it was kind of May of this year, I, I kind of felt the need for a change. Um, and this opportunity with Bytespeed came up to kind of come in and create a position that was really focused on advancing esports, kind of like what we've been talking about. So I, I was hired here at Bytespeed in May of 2019. Um, so it's been about five, six months now, uh, which is crazy. Um, but with this new role as the esports and VR solutions director, I really get to focus on two product lines. VR and, and all the great things that are happening there and then esports and really have those high level conversations of how we as a company can help um, schools get programs off the ground, high school and college, uh, and be a resource for those schools uh, as best we can. Um, I rely on my background in the three and a half years that I was a program director. I use that knowledge and, and help pass that on to the next generation of coaches. And that's a super cool environment for me to be in. And then we can provide hardware for those schools and get them up and, and get them the equipment that they need to be successful. I'm super excited about what we're doing. Um, I think the partnerships that we're creating and the relationships that we're building are super valuable. Um, and, and we're helping out a lot of schools. We really appreciate you coming on and taking the time uh, to talk about your previous role at, at the University of Jamestown and your, your current role here at uh, Byte Speed and Gravity Gaming. So. And of course, you're always welcome to come down and see our facility and talk with our students anytime that you want yes. to. I would love to. That would be like bucket list item for sure. We'll be in touch. We wish you the best, safe travels, and thanks again for coming on The Game Room. All right, and that's going to do it for another episode of The Game Room. Uh, a little bit different today, but Teddy will be right back next week, so stay tuned. Uh, but for every one of us here at The Game Room, I'm Rob. I'm other Rob. And thank, and thank you, you for, for playing. playing.
If you like what you see at the game room, make sure to smash this like button right here. Hit the subscribe button right here, or check out one of our new videos over here. We'll see you later.